Hi, this is Martin Brennan from Engineer Systems. We're live here at Amsterdam 2011 for IBC. We're, we're giving away jelly beans. We're doing the whole thing. But what we want to show you today is actually doing the lens tool and the remove tool in Mocha Pro. Some people aren't aware of how these features work, so we're going to go through it now and take you through how the lens tool works first off. So I'm just going to show you the shot here. We've got this nice big Mac laptop here that uh, has a huge distortion on it. When you're working in production, quite often you just don't have that camera setting uh, already available when you're actually doing your work. So the lens tool, it actually just does all the work for you. We can actually locate all the lines in the scene. So we just click this button down here and that will actually detect all these curvy lines that we can now and try to fix. So I just tell it, I'm going to define some straight lines here that I want it to correct in my scene. You don't have to be too liberal with this, you can do as much as you like, but this is enough just to give a nice calibration over the whole lens. I'm now going to set it to a one parameter distortion. This actually helps to work out barrel distortion specifically. We've got a lot of other features for different lens types, but the one parameter barrel distortion is quite often the normal one. And we're going to set a focal distance here. I can then just go out to my grid here so we can see what this distortion looks like. And then we get that nice curve along the edge here. So once we've got this, we can choose to do a couple of things. We can either render it flat just by using our render button here, and you'll see that flatten out. This, of course, will actually reduce the amount of uh, detail around your edges because it will flatten it out. So what we can do instead is keep our distortion and actually insert distorted shots into our footage and then render those clips out so we don't lose any of that quality. So I'm going to just do a track around the edge of the screen here. The reason I'm tracking around the edge here is because we've got this nice big glare in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to draw just around the edge, so all of this red will be tracked here. We're going to turn on perspective because we've got a nice big shift going on here. And I'm going to ramp up my pixel maybe to about 40% just to keep that nice and solid. So I'm going to track forwards now. So you can see as we're going here, we've got this grid. It's actually warping along with our track. And once it's done, you can actually see how this motion blur is coming in here nicely. And then we've got a nice locked off shot here. So I'm just going to reposition my surface, which is where we can put our insert. So it's just around this screen. So you can see how, as I'm moving this surface around, how that curve is coming around the edges of the screen, because it's still being distorted with that lens data we calibrated earlier. So once I've got that, I can come over to my insert clips. I'm just going to import a simple screenshot here. So we're going to find this on my system. We've got a lot of demos here. There we go. So once that's in there, we can just readjust that a little bit. Now we can come over to this insert tool. The insert tool is really good for like putting in that motion blur when you need to do insert work. It's got some nice basic compositing tasks as well. We don't ever want to like replace a full compositor because that's not what we're about. So we just give you the tools to be able to assist it to get it into your workflow. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to click on motion blur. I'm going to turn off my mat so we can see this nice render happen. I'm going to render forwards now. Helps if I click the button. And as we render through, you'll see this insert actually do that motion blur along with that lens distortion as well. And once we've got that lens distortion, we can just render that straight out to a clip, whatever you need. So TIFF, DPX, your quick time. And there's that playback right there. You can see a nice, easy distortion with that lens blur. So right now, I'm going to also now show you how to use the remove tool. Here we've got a nice clip here. Now we haven't tried this one too much, so we're going to do like a seat of our pants type of thing. This guy's hat is just way too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down and make it like a, more like a bowler hat. At the moment we've got a really blurry, horrible background to work with here. So I'm going to try and track out his hat first and then mask that out. So I'm going to draw a nice big shape. I'm going to grab some of his face just because there's some nice texture detail on there. And I'm going to avoid his hand, because his hand right now, if we scrub through that, you can see how that's moving off there. And we want to try and avoid that. So again, all this red area is going to be tracked, because it's a planar tracker specifically. It tracks all those pixels within that red area. So I'm going to leave perspective off, because it's a nice easy pan on this shot. So let's just name this, because we want to always keep organized. So I'm going to do a uh, hat track. And let's start tracking that. So that's our nice easy track. Now that we've done this track, I'm just going to turn it off. We don't need to see that anymore. And now I'm going to do the background. In fact, I'm going to put the hat track back on because I do actually need that background masked out. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Because we've got a pan going on, I'm actually going to come to the, about the middle of my shot to start my track from there. 
And I'll zoom out a little bit here. And I'm just going to draw a nice large shape around where that top of the hat we want to remove is. Just like so. Just going to right click and I'm going to straighten those points out just to keep it nice and neat. And very importantly, we need to drag that layer below our hat in the stack. So if we go to our track mats here, you can see how that hat is cutting out of our view here. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to pull it out a little bit further so we can mask out more of that detail so the background doesn't get interfered with that shot. So we can see there. So let's just call this background. And I'm going to ramp it up to again to about 40. 40 is probably enough for this shot. And I'm going to start tracking forwards. So once we've got that, as you can see, it's tracking through there. And then we come back right to the middle where we started our frame and track backwards. So we can see again how that uh, hat is being masked out while we're doing our work here. So once we've got that, now I'm going to turn off my uh, hat track because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to come in and actually do the roto around the top of the hat here. Actually, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of it because we don't want this part now. So I'm going to turn on my hat track. I'm going to draw a shape, a very basic shape, because I just want to slice the top off this hat here. But it's too tall, like so. And once we've got this shape, let's just call this hat remove. I'm going to link that hat remove to my hat track so I don't have to go and retrack it again. So we can see how that's now following through and removing that hat. I'm just going to adjust that one mask over so we can just get it off completely. Like so. Now you can see here that this hand is kind of going to get in the way of my background here. So I'm going to do a little bit of a mask around this one too. So I'm just going to come in here and draw a shape around his hand. And I'm going to quickly track that through. So I'm just going to turn off the track for my background and track that hand through. So you can see it's fallen off a little bit there, so that's all right. We just need to pull up these bits here and get a few keyframes in there just to make sure that finger is actually covered, just like that. And once it's over here, we can just get rid of it. I'm just going to put it down there for the time being. Nice and easy. So I'm just going to call this a hand mask. Okay, so now that we've done that mask, we can go ahead and do the remove. So how we do this is, first of all, we've got this little... Uh, hat track layer here that we did before. When you're actually doing a remove, that actually still will mask even though it's invisible because we can do a lot of layers, there's a lot of layer management, sometimes you need these masks hidden but also want to be used. So in order for it not to be part of that, we want to right click our layer and just deactivate it because I do not want that to be part of my masking otherwise it won't do any removals. So oh, now I can click my hat remove. We're in our remove tool already so let's just start rendering forwards. So you can see now how it's just cleaning out that nice top of the hat there and we've got our background coming behind where that hat used to be. So all that's left to do now is, is we want to put that shape back on top so we get a nice bowler rather than a top hat. So at this point I'm just going to turn off my hat remove layer and we can turn off the hat mask layer now too and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to draw a very basic hat shape mask over the top of this. So like so. I'm going to do a right click and just smooth out all those points and then come back down here and just straighten those out by dragging these ones. So like that. Let's make it a little bit more hatty. There we go. Maybe down a little bit further. Perfect. Right, so once we've got that, again, we can link it to our hat track. So I'm going to come down here to link to track and put it on the hat track. So I'm just going to zoom out again to see how that's looking. It's not too bad. We might need to put a little bit, one more point out the side here. Just so we cover the rest of that hat there. Let's put it out there. There we go. So once we've got that, we can now use our insert tool to insert a frame back in and replace the hat. So I'm going to come down to my insert clip and I'm going to import the clip again because we just want to get one frame here which is the first frame of this clip. So I'm going to go to import, I'm going to choose one. So we're going to go back to that uh, shot here. I should mention by the way that we are using clips from the operators that go and check out their clip at theoperators.net. It's a fantastic demonstration of what Mocha can do and the visual X prowess of those guys. 
So thanks guys for giving those footage. So let's uh, get the, where are we, Penny 4v4? No, it's actually the other one. Import. There we go. And we're on 125, so I'm just going to set up a single frame on 125 to 125. Now at the moment we can't see it, so we go over to the insert tool. I need to actually put my background clip as my remove clip, otherwise we're not going to be able to see this in the viewer. So we, in our background clip and our input, we just come down and we look for our remove one, which is right here, remove. And now you can see a tiny little image coming in here, so I'm going to just do a line surface and that will blow my insert out to full frame, just like so. Now you can see right now it's actually filling the whole frame because we don't actually have our layer mask activated. So right down here in our insert tool, we've got this comp tab. If we go to the comp tab, we can say use layer mats, and then that will cut it down. And you can see we're already getting a nice bowler shape here. Because there was a little bit of lighting on the top of the hat, I'm just going to drag it down. I'm just going to hold down my Q key. Helps if I don't have my point selected. And then we come down here, and we're just going to line that up a little bit, and maybe scale it up just a tad. So let's just scale that up from this point. Anywhere you use the scale tool, it's going to put that axis point in the middle of that scale. So it's really useful to be able to put it right where that hat is so we don't have it scale off in some direction that we can't see. So once we've got that, I'm just going to do a little bit more here. I'm just going to, just to give it a bit of a soft edge, I'm going to select all my points just like that, or we can do Control-A, obviously. And we're going to set an edge width of about 2 on this, like so. And I'm just going to set it up the other end just to make sure that's framed correctly, just like that. Finally, what I'm going to do is come back to my insert tool. We've got a fair bit of motion blur going on in this. So again, using that insert tool, we can set up our motion blur and start rendering that forward. So let's just render that out. So it's calculating that motion blur. You can see here, when you turn off our overlays, you can see that. Just like so. And there you have it. We've got a nice bowler hat instead of a top hat, and that's just using the remove tool and the insert tools right inside the program. That We haven't had to go outside the compositor or do anything now. But now what we can do is we can render that clip out, go and finish it up inside After Effects, Nuke, whatever you like to use. We've got so many products that we use now, you'll have a lot of fun with it. So thanks for your time today, guys, and we'll see you next year at IBC.